ideas, and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the show participants only. Nothing stated in this program reflects the ideas, opinions, or beliefs of this radio station and or Clear Channel Radio. You know, it's a new trend involving America's moms. Along with packing school lunches and reading bedtime stories, many moms are also smoking marijuana. Let's see how David Martin is spinning this one in the News Remixed. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the News Remixed. Oh, looks like it's time for this week's lottery pick. Good luck, everyone. Number 18. Oh, rats. Oh, we have a winner. It's very exciting. It's very gratifying. I've, I've you know, I've personally put in um, hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of hard work. Hmm, that sounds a bit like a gambling. Oh, this is the Arizona Medical Marijuana Lottery. Right. The state has 100 spots for dispensaries, but five times that number in applications. Hence the bingo lot. Number 18. Got it. Thank you. Whether medicinal or recreational, marijuana use is a hot topic in the news. You would be amazed at how many moms smoke weed. What? You had moms smoking weed in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Well, YouTube's Mikkel is on to something. A fascinating New York Post article came out recently that addressed marijuana moms and their everyday lives. All of a sudden, they're happy and playful, you know? <laughs> really? Our friends at the Gentleman's Rant on YouTube see it differently. I don't want any of your pot race crispy treats because the last time I ate one, I spent 15 minutes trying to close a drawer that was already closed. Okay, I'm off topic. Back to moms and marijuana. A lot of women are taking prescription pills. And you know why they're watching their kids. Marijuana works way better than any pill I've ever taken in my life. Well, the Post interviewed moms who thought the pot helped cope with stress. And heck, you'll find moms like Jessica Gottlieb on YouTube encouraging marijuana legalization. Moms, I'm begging you. Let's get marijuana legal because you know what? It'll make it safer for our kids. What? Your children, they are going to try it. They are going to buy their pot from a Coke dealer. That's what makes it a gateway drug. If you can grow it in your backyard, it won't really be that much of an issue now, will it? Can of worms closed. The New York Post also talks to the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. That group says more moms are using weed to replace alcohol and anti-anxiety pills, claiming that marijuana is a more organic stress relief. Potheads love to tell you how natural weed is, but just because something is natural doesn't make it completely safe. You know what else is natural? Bears. <laughs> We'd love to hear your opinion about moms and marijuana on Facebook.com slash The News Remixed and Twitter at The News Remixed. And we leave you now with one last clip. Oh, is this the real lottery? All right, here we go. Number 18. Let's go get what? 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 Countdown to launch. <laughs> Launch commit. Radio show. Guidance is internal. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Power clear. Um, okay, we are live at the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Steve is the host with the co-host Denise. Starting at noon Saturdays every week. Yes, we keep it. You legal. Legislators and lawyers, doctors and the growers. The show is for the people. Michigan medical marijuana, no hassle. We talk about anything, any issue we can handle. Call us up and let us know what is on your mind. And make sure when you do it, do it legal every time. Hey. So we get into that medical marijuana show. 855 M radio. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. Hey. So we get into that medical marijuana show. 855 
triple M radio. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. Okay, we're back out for hour number two of the Medical Marijuana Radio Show live from the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club. Did we put that up there? I gotta, I gotta put the camera picture up because you know, can you see us? There we are at the back of Rick's head for a second. Who puts <laughs> the camera on the back of Rick's head? It's a nice back of the head, though. Now I got the back of my head. It's yep. you know depends on which angle you're looking Not at. Not too many people have seen that from me. Oh, so. you know me either. So thanks, Rick. Mm. Appreciate that innuendo. Or you know, <laughs> hey, look, I said innuendo. Never well, mind. Well, so um. <laughs> <laughs> in you and uh, oh, yeah, stop. yeah, oh, yeah. We stop. he broke it down. I Break did. it down, Rick. No, I'm just <laughs> I think I did. So it is the crazy medical marijuana radio show. We get all over the map, folks. So we were just a couple of weeks ago up doing the um, you know what we could live broadcasting from the uh, the Mac Bridge, mm-hmm. the uh, Mackinac Bridge, the uh, annual first annual normal bridge walk. Which uh, did they make some money off that? Did they was that a fundraiser? I don't know. I don't really think so. To me, I know that normal spent a lot of money. Um, Rick's speaking dessert up. right now, in case you're wondering. He's, he's, mm, <laughs> so good cheesecake. Oh. The, the, the cheesecake is awesome here at the uh, yeah, sure is, Everything actually was here. The pig roast was fantastic, too. But I think Normal spent some money on some buses to get people up there. They did. It was a significant event uh, as far as statewide goes. And, and there may be some naysayers, but I think the most important thing is uh, we gathered together as a community, although Normal sponsored the event. There were a lot of non-Normal members that attended. Look, we're medical marijuana related, and we were up there um, uh, as a part of that promotion because I thought it was a great thing to do. It certainly was, and, and it made a big impact, too. And not only did the individual people that we saw and talked with uh, on the bridge itself uh, learn more about medical marijuana just from our association, but the image that we gave was one of organization, one of respect, and one of respectability. Uh, and I think that uh, people will have to reevaluate their existing opinions of what the medical marijuana activists and, and marijuana legalization activists are all about. So this yeah. is where Denise jumps in and says, "Yes, yes." <laughs> that was you. your cue, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read your lines? Come on. So, um, we I was just still stuck on the fact that you said non-normal instead of abnormal. <laughs> non-normal, abnormal. That's pretty funny. That's a that's that's a cartoon waiting to happen right there. Non-normal abnormal. and abnormal. Um, the reason we came out here today was uh, both because we wanted to raise awareness of the Compassion Club out here on the west side of the state. Um, we're always out on the uh, east side of the state and uh, maybe in the mid middle part of the state. We don't often get north like we did with the Mackinac Bridge Tour, Mm -hmm. Um, and we don't often get west. So it's nice to get out here um, and show people this side of the state and and what's going on out here. It also gave us an opportunity to um, bring uh, LV Musaka. Musica. 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 Why did I keep screwing that up? I thought I had it right at the end of the last show. Just think music to uh Musica. to come out and tell her story and we did mm-hmm. that uh last hour if you didn't catch that look back in the previous videos if you're looking online uh or uh you know you have to look at look at another spot yeah, i think a lot of times people uh, forget that the, the michigan is, is a much larger state than most other states in the union not only do we have two peninsulas but even the, the lower peninsula is so fragmented if we don't make the effort to get across to other people and in, in, in places in other parts mm-hmm. of the state who is going to do that right it's important for us to unify too, because you find you find such um, dedicated people to this cause in little pockets, and certainly Kalamazoo is one of the stronger ones. It's a fantastic. It, it was already one of my favorite places because Bell's is here, but but um, it's obviously one of the more um, active and um, um, understanding and and willing progressive places as far as as. The medical marijuana is concerned. Um, Refuels my activism fire when I see all these people out here that are just as, as uh, ardent in their support as, as what we are. It's outstanding. Absolutely. Well, and and it gives it's us beautiful a, out here, too. Uh-huh. Yes. Gorgeous day, gorgeous community. Wonderful folks, and yeah. the food was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it seems to me that the west side of the state and the north part of the state are kind of lobe segmented in, mm-hmm. you know, by proximity. Sure. So um, a lot of times you, the people that we see in the Detroit area or in the Lansing area, um, aren't often, in, you know, people from the north and the and the west. So I see a lot of faces out here. I'm like, wow, why haven't I seen you before? I've been doing this for a while. And I haven't seen you yet. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of those kind of faces out here today. So it's it's a great chance to learn to learn new people out in the other parts of the state doing the same thing we are in that side of the state. I was talking to some of the members of the Compassion Club, and there were quite a few new folks that came out today too that heard about the event through Facebook or through some of the other social media that we do. Uh, it's a great way for folks to improve their um, their. Uh, 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 membership uh, also improve their public profile. Uh, when you you get active like that, 
you really do make a statement that people can follow it. Um, oftentimes people have a desire to be active and, and to express activism, but they just don't have a forum or a venue. And it's tough to act alone. I mean, I know that we always think that, that what we do is not that difficult, but really, for someone that hasn't had the experience that Steve or Denise or myself may have had, Boy, it's really tough to make that first effort to go to Lansing by yourself and to drive a car all the way up there for a rally when you don't know a face. I, I think it's important for these compassion clubs to stay strong, too, because of that. I think if you're just getting into this, certainly most of the time you can't go to your doctor, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get on the Internet and half the information you have is inaccurate or, or, or seems kind of overwhelming. But I think when you come to a compassion club and you can hear people talk about their particular stories and about what's going on in the greater community and in the state, uh, and the people at these clubs are really well informed, then you certainly get that sense of community immediately. And I think you find a purpose really quickly. Yeah, you know, where else can you get uh, a chance to rub elbows with someone that's as famous as uh, as Elvi uh, Musica? Uh, <laughs> really, it's it's just amazing that we get a chance to see people like Irv Rosenfeld, Look, who's I, made a couple of appearances in, in Michigan lately. First time I saw Irv, I think, was on Reason TV. There was a camera shot of him in his car driving around in L.A. somewhere. Um, or in, it might have been in West. I, I saw palm trees. I might have mistaken it for puffing L.A. Puffing away, it wasn't he? But, he, yeah, he's puffing away in his car, and he's talking about how it's okay for him to smoke in his car. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to uh, to, to be in those shoes for a second and understand that perspective where he doesn't he can drive was, around. And if he gets pulled over by an officer, he just pulls out his federal paperwork, and they're yeah. like, oh, you're one of those guys? How do we run across you? Yep, he, uh, he was uh, uh, very, very much openly uh, doing it on Michigan Avenue. He was the only one in the group uh, on Wednesday at the Arbor C. Randall uh, Memorial Wellness Center, the only one that was smoking out openly on Michigan Avenue. None of the others uh, And he's did. just so unabashedly afraid. How uh, Wouldn't that be awesome? Isn't that what we're all striving for in the long run? Exactly. That right. status. You, you know, and, and that's attainable within our lifetime. And, and for a while, most people didn't attainable. think it was. I Man, it was. I hope it's way early. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I don't have to wait a lifetime. Some of us are older, you know. Our lifetime is a little closer to being <laughs> over, but uh, young people like Denise and like Kevin Spittler <laughs> over here. You see, you like that? I worked that in there. Thank you, young like Denise. We, we, Kevin, you, they got a lot of life left know, in them. Kevin, uh, we never did give those Cedar Point tickets away. We were going to do it. We talked about it over there at the other. We should probably try and find a pair of people to give those tickets to somehow randomly. Let's I don't find know. a pair. You, to let's give them let's to, just yeah. say the next person that walks completely past the tent, those guys, those guys get the tent. The, the, well, I, I see. Uh, That's really random. Well, it is pretty random. It is. And Master that's as listening. random as they have to walk completely past the front of the tent. They can't hear us from here. All but the if they way walk past. completely past the front, well, or, or through the cones. How about through the cones? Or <laughs> use their motorized scooter. There's two cones out there. We'll have them when the next people to walk through the cones. If it's one person, they get the tickets and they get to share that with somebody else. Hang on, hang on. I think we might have a take. Hang on, wait. We'll bring him over. He was listening. He was so listening. No, no, I don't think so at all. He's completely unaware. He's cute, so we should definitely give him the tickets. He's cute. He says, "Hey, hey, can we get you to come over here for a second? Come here." Yes, you did. We got a winner. We have a winner. She said he was cute. She liked bugs. Oh, shush, shush, shush. Stop. For no reason other than you walk through those cones. We're going to give you a couple of tickets to Cedar Point to go to our broadcast of the Medical Marijuana Radio Show taking place in two weeks. Would you like to come with us? You don't know. It's free Cedar Point tickets. How can you just shrug your shoulders? Like Halloween, it. man. They all dress up. It's sexy. It's awesome. Yeah. He doesn't want to do Cedar Point? Uh, go give them to somebody and bring them back here and we'll talk about another radio. Is that cool? Find All right, cool. That you like that wants. Sure. Oh. We got to go. We'll be right back with more after this so on the Medical Marijuana too. Radio Show. We'll be right back. We'll be right back on the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. The law offices of Targowski and Grill remind you to stand up for your rights. Always treat law enforcement with respect, but if you're detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to talk to my attorneys, John Targowski and Daniel Grow. Targowski and Grow have the education and experience you need to be successful in Michigan courts. Call Targowski and Grow toll-free, 800-957-1069. The law offices of Targowski and Grow, 800-957-1069. Introducing the Bolt, an incredible tool patients and caregivers find invaluable. It's widely known that concentrates are an effective yet expensive quick fix for pain and nausea, but oils and earwax are messy and easy to waste. The Bolt is made of titanium, just a dab, easy to use. No mess, no expensive waste. Get the Bolt of the new Thunderbolt, made in the USA, right here in Michigan. Details on how to equip your club or dispensary at the-bolt.com or call 586-540-7582. The Bolt, 586-540-7582.
If you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. Medical marijuana certification. And now you can find out everything you need to know online at GetPotID.com. Or write down this toll-free number, 855-D-O-C-C-E-R-T. A friendly specialist will direct you to our Farmington Hills office. Medical marijuana certification. GetPotID.com. It's the key to getting your card. Information, resources, and in the end, if you're qualified, a medical card. Call toll-free right now, 855-D-O-C-C-E-R-T. That's 855-DOC-CERT. It's GetPotID.com. The Medical Marijuana Radio Show is the most listened to show like it in the state, number one. And there's no wonder. We take our listeners to amusement parks and give away awesome prizes just for listening. Get your product or service known to patients and caregivers and reach this group like never before. Call 810-423-2350. YouTube, Ustream, and social media in combination with 1310 WDTW and RadioWeedShow.com give you huge visibility. Affordable, effective advertising is here. Call 810-423-2350 now. Michigan Organic Solutions in Flint. Patients and caregivers joining together to provide premium quality medical marijuana, edibles, clones, and other natural products and accessories to eligible patients. Now get newly certified for just $99. $99. Or renewed for just $69. That's right, doctor renewals for just $69. Now at Michigan Organic Solutions, Dort Highway, Flint. And don't miss their Ann Arbor Medical Marijuana Conference at the Clarion in Ann Arbor next weekend. Michigan Organic Solutions. MIOrganicSolutions.com. So we're back out at the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club doing the live thing uh, for hour number two. Uh, is it going to be a complete hour? Could, will they let us stay out here for a complete another hour? No, no it looks like they cleaned everything up. Um, you can always bend her down to the med joint. It's down a- in um, 6857 West Main Street. Hey, thanks for giving the address. That's uh, from straight from the mouth of Kevin Spittler from Med Joint in Kalamazoo, just up the street from Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club. Give them your uh, telephone number or something, uh, Kevin. Yeah, um, we actually did a revamping of our webpage recently, and that you can find that at www.mijoint.com. Um, we have some awesome, awesome testimonial pages on there, and I was showing Denise the uh, exhaust burn. It was incredible, and the and the the skin cancer. Yeah. Which was extremely interesting to me because yeah. I'm I'm at high risk being a little Irish girl and I've had some moles removed. So I mean that's that's something that I would be really interested in. And that was the oil, yep. Gersh's topical Gersh oil. Avery's topical oil. That's oh, it disappeared. Some, it was on the yep. table a minute ago, and now it's gone. Poof, just like that. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's something that what we'll, what we do at the uh, med joint. Um, we do give that away to every member that comes in there. Um, it's, a it's way part of, of the Sweet Apple campaign, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. well, the, the sober project, I like to call it medical marijuana. And, you know, it's going to be a way of um, educating people that there is ways of using this medicine without getting that side effect of being high. There's juicing and there's topicals and there's bars of soap. hundred other ways, hundred other ways. Yeah, and there's always different side streets that take us to that main street that, you know. You've you got to talk in the mic, not move the mic it's around. A, it's amazing, go. too, because the, the, all of the arguments against marijuana are so thin and so, you know, five minutes ago. Well, and they keep saying them like they mean right. something. But, oh, it's a gateway drug. Oh, it gets you high. Oh, did, none of it. None of it is is true. It's yeah. None of it's true. And they and just, I, and I think we're, they don't we, even have any new good new ones. Right. And I think taking the position of where if we can get people to ask themselves, if they're not getting high from medical marijuana, what's the point? And why are they keep coming back and getting that product if it's not getting them high? That it's giving just, them pain relief. It's yeah. it's relieving their condition. That is where the strong social acceptance can really come into play. Sooner or later, we're going to get to the root of the matter, which is, you know, the pharmaceutical companies don't want it around because it's competition, and neither do the alcohol. No, they want it around, but they producer. want it around in a form that they can cash well, in on. Yeah, which they haven't figured out yet. Well, especially so, especially if people are allowed to grow their own medicine mm-hmm. by at the patient and caregiver level. Because as long as you're allowed to do that, you nobody's know going to run down to the pharmacy and buy the spray or the oil or whatever exactly. it is that they are producing. 
Which is why when we see legislation like 5580 and 5681, the, the dispensary legislation that's currently pending, um, and everyone says, yay, dispensaries, you have to read the, the fine, fine print, print of these the things in the details. and figure out what's going to happen. And, uh, and really, and that's where, you know, as you were saying, Kevin, the education comes in. It's very well, important to do. Doing a fine job of educating people like that. Uh, are there other ways that you're going? I mean, the silver tour, I think, is another great idea about, uh, about educating people about how, how, you know, the typical, because you hear Senator Jones makes the argument about, I saw him say it just this weekend on the MIRS news service, um, making a quote to somebody, and they did it with several other press interviews as well, uh, saying that, you know, the voters were duped, it should go back before the voters and they should vote again, and it would, you know, I'd only have to get two-thirds of both legislators to do it, uh, legislature, you know, both houses to do it, um, that... People thought when they voted for this law in the first place that grandma would be getting her her joints from the pharmacist and she wouldn't be, it would, kids weren't be, going to be buying this on the street. And um, it's just such a fallacial argument. I mean, it's so just nonsensical that you would think in the first place that kids have stronger access to marijuana when it's regulated than when it's not. Because clearly you can go out on the streets of any city in any place USA and buy marijuana on the streets easily. Um, but have those same kids try and get alcohol or tobacco, and they'll tell you that unless they can find a friend who's brave enough to go down and secretly uh, buy it at the store and bring it back and give it to them in the garage somewhere, that it ain't happening. Um, and so that's the important thing, I think. Also, I don't want to downplay completely the idea that THC is, is a scary thing. THC helps a lot of people with other, other remedies, but I do love the idea that people have to understand that it doesn't necessarily include the element of, of uh, uh, the psychotropic effect. So uh, those are all very important ideas. Um, it looks I, I, like I do think people are learning. I, I you know, just... You're all right. Uh, the, the motorcycle's <laughs> background noise, so it's, it's okay. You, it's Lots of it, but go ahead. Just this week, I have a friend who um, is going through breast cancer for the second time in her life. She's in her mid-30s. Uh, she just had a double mastectomy. She went to the um, cancer center here in Kalamazoo. As and... Steve smokes and puffs away on his cigarette <laughs> and gives people other, you know, secondhand smoke down line. I'm such a jackass sometimes. You are. <laughs> Let's move on. Go ahead. <laughs> and, <laughs> I pause. I just had to self, self-mutilate self for a second. Go ahead. When she, um, when she went in to discuss her treatment um, regimen with her oncologist, they said, well, last time you took this medication for your nausea. And she said, you know, can we try something different? Because, you know, I really didn't like the side effects. It didn't really work for me. Right, and right. she said, okay, well, then we'll get you your medical marijuana recommendation. She didn't ask for it. She didn't say a thing about it. Wow. That was their first choice to go to. And she said, she looked at her and she said, oh, you know, that would be great. So I'm a little shocked that you offered. And she said, you know, we have to walk a fine line because we get federal funding. Right. But we know it works for people. Isn't that incredible? You know, the the medical community in Michigan is obviously in a sticky spot, but at the same time, I hold them very responsible for not pushing harder on this. So many of them are beholden to their hospital affiliations and their insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies that they get whatever it is from. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, there are rules, but uh, there are rules and I'm not sure how well they stick to them. Uh, and I really hold uh, some, uh, the, the Michigan medical community, um, very responsible for not exploring this much faster and much more in depth than they have been for, for quite a while. I mean, when you go to your doctor and you say, you know, I'd like to talk to you about medical marijuana, and they say, well, there isn't any research on it. Well, whose fault is that? You know, I'm not a doctor. Why don't you do some, you know, double-blind peer-reviewed research and let's at least get the ball rolling and then you can't get funding for it. So, I mean, it's so unbelievably encouraging to hear that there's a doctor who's willing to do that. You know, because they are. They're taking a risk, but, but it's about time. If we all stand together... You know, and it'll you know happen. The philosophy, in the end, it works for the patient. Right. That's exactly. Exactly. I, I, interestingly, I, I have another friend who is actually a nurse practitioner, and, and this is where I'm encouraged that what we do does make a difference, and it is spreading. It, it may be spreading a little slower than what we would like, but it is spreading. But she had just attended a, a conference where um, they were discussing the overuse of prescription drugs and what the doctors could do to help reduce this, as in... Uh, no refills, cutting back, you know, you don't get 30 pills, you get 10 pills, all of those things that they could do as physicians. 
there was a specialist there, um, he's an addiction specialist, and they came up, up upon the subject of marijuana. And he says, well, you know, there can be up to 300 different things in marijuana, such as, you know, PCP and cocaine and this chemical and that chemical, and then he's rattling this off. He's, he's claiming and, there's PCP and cocaine well, yes, in the marijuana? I, I, yes, I know, I'd like to know I where know. he's getting that uh, from. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, yeah. And, um, Fear-mongering, when basically. I, when I, well, I tried yeah. to explain this to my client. I said, okay, that's kind of like going to McDonald's and ordering a filet of fish and then putting caviar on it, but only charging you for a filet of fish. It doesn't happen. Or, you know, you could also go in in the same place and go, you know, there's an acceptable amount of rat feces in there. Uh, in your peanut end butter of that you eat every End day. of story. Yes. I mean, yes. you know, th- it doesn't make any sense right. to make that argument right. to people. But, They're fallacial but, but arguments. Is, is they really are. I yeah. mean, he's serious about this. And their, their concern was drug interaction. We don't know what's in it. So it's, I am you know, so tired of doctors continuing yes. to tell the public that they're not going to use medical marijuana because they don't know what's in it. Find out what's in it. Get back to us. Well, and that's the point. <laughs> oh, that's where my goodness. client, because of, or my, my friend, because of speaking with her yeah. and um, dealing with her and educating her, her response was, well, you know, it's my understanding that dispensaries actually do testing to ensure that it's safe and so that they can prescribe it. Mm-hmm. And he was just floored. He said, really, I, I didn't know that occurred. Of course he didn't. Of course he didn't. They usually yeah. think Why would that we're growing that? a bunch of plants. Right. I mean, but in the township, every time they show up, they're like, where's, where's the pot the at? Where are you growing at? It's, it's that ripple effect. It's mm-hmm. that one little drop, and now yep. it's rippling out. And mm-hmm. we, we are starting to see that. This mm-hmm. is not a medical marijuana patient. This is someone in the medical field. Mm-hmm. She just shared this information with a you know, a, a conference of very prominent doctors in the area. Now they all have this information, and it, it, it will spread from there. I've got clients who are nurses, a husband and wife who are nurses up in Genesee County, and they're trying to start a dispensary, because, and they both quit their jobs because they're disgusted with how they are just pill pushers anymore and the and the people who they work for are and they don't they see that they're not helping patients so they both they're just disgusted with the medical field right. and they're trying to go a different route so yeah it's happening it is slowly but it's happening so i wanted to i didn't want to happening. give up the idea about talking about politics because we're coming up on the season where the, where people need to start thinking about who they're going to vote for and whether or not there's a medical marijuana f- friendly candidate or issue on the ballot in their area and um, I, there are some of those people. And so I just want to take a, normally I don't do this during the, during the programming segment, but I just wanted to take a, because I don't have this commercial in the commercial break uh, for reasons because we're on remote. Uh, I've got the Jane Boudreau commercial. So I'm going to play that for you real quick, and then we'll come back and talk politics. And I did want to miss the director of the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club and thanking him for having us out here and talk some more about his place. We'll be right back after this from Jane Felice Boudreau, police supporter. a month to be an absentee leader. Hello, my name is Jane Felice Boudreau and I'm running for sheriff because the taxpayers of Oakland County deserve better. He ran for U.S. Senate, he lost. He ran for governor and he lost. How much time on our Oakland County dime are we going to allow this man to continue to look for another job? This November, you have a choice. Please vote for me, Jane Felice Boudreau, for Oakland County Sheriff. Paid for by the committee to elect Jane Felice Boudreau for Oakland County Sheriff. Oh, we're back. <laughs> you see, it's a quick commercial. Um, let me switch back, switch back to the camera. Um, uh, the Compal- Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club director was getting ready to leave. He, uh, I just wanted, uh, wanted to give him a chance to, you know, give us a goodbye. And uh, thank you for having us out here to help discuss this issue and, and providing a place, uh, a venue for all these people to meet and to commingle and to share stories and information and go back out in the community and uh, wear that badge because... Uh, We're meeting on the 19th on the Capitol lawn. It's the last stand of the Medical Marijuana Act. Um, it's there, it should be very big. There's if anybody was at the last event, it was like 3,000 people out there. Um, I'd like to see that out here again. I'd like to see it bigger. Um, I don't know if if we people can afford again to come from the north and the west, but um, we'd love to see uh, people out there represented on the the Capitol steps. It's the last chance to tell our legislators what we think about the legislation before them, whether you're for it or against certain bills or against certain bills. Some people like some, they don't like others. Um, Personally, I'm against all of them. I think we stand a better, we fare a better chance with the original act and uh, with the current uh, court situations. I don't know if anybody saw, but um, Denise, did you see that the, um, I didn't wanna, uh, please, uh, can, you're gonna leave in a minute, I didn't wanna, do you want to say anything before you go? Yeah, I wanted to make sure to thank you guys for coming out here and helping us put all this on. This was absolutely an excellent time. We <clears throat> we really appreciate everybody that's like-minded like us coming out here, sharing their information, trying to get a little bit of input in. 
and everybody had a terrific time. It, we did. It was fantastic. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we really wouldn't have a chance to do these kinds of remotes unless we had places like this to go to. And some people are afraid. They're like, oh, we don't want to. We're a compassion club. We can't, we, you know, shh. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, hiding is one thing, but, um, uh, you know, people have this mentality that um, there's something wrong going on. And I just, I refuse to walk around society like I'm doing anything wrong. I, me too. I mean, I, I had to ask my then husband before I got into this area of law, and it wasn't because I was afraid to do it, but, um, you know, I'm like, we're going to have to go to church and school, and these are our kids, so I, I guess I better ask him. <laughs> you know? Right, right. So we're either going to have the two coolest kids in junior high in Brighton or, you know, not. So uh, he was all for it. So, you know, it's, it's something you have to consider, but at the same time, it's something you have to speak up about, you know. People, people will come up to me and they'll say, you're so brave. And I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, wearing jeans in Saudi Arabia. I don't consider this to be a bravery issue right, at right. this point. So, but uh, it I mean, is the, interesting the, the, how, how, how timid people get about this topic. Correct, correct. especially just the, the patients that are not growing for themselves or that uh, sure. don't have a caregiver, sometimes have to rely on other mm -hmm. safe access models. Sure. Those guys are the ones that seem to be the most timid, the most shy. And I think the ones that are taking the most risk are the people who are, who are providing safe access. I mean, the, the caregivers, really, or the people who are even growing for themselves. Those guys are, are taking the risk. Exactly. Uh, those are the guys that maybe should be more cautious about their presentation and their, you know, presentation of information. Um, ah, clearly. Oh, definitely. Yes. Uh, clearly. But, uh, but as, you know, as far as uh, the remainder of the community, I just don't see anybody doing anything wrong. And I refuse to, to support or back anybody who wants to claim that they are. Uh, how could you how could you be against somebody taking care of their health? I mean, really, uh, the, the the lady I, I watch people all the time at the restaurant sit and take their medicine before they eat. You know, yes. Some of them have a little pill box and they're saying, "Oh what yeah, you've got the pill box with the days of the week on them." That's what Elvie was talking about. Yes. She she has friends who have she doesn't have a pill box. Bless her. Well, it's because she's you know? got she's got one pill box. It's her purse with it's got her joint in there. <laughs> Good for her. Ten. Good for her. Man, I I'll tell you what, if I could get away with doing that and not having pills when I'm older. Bring it oh, on. Fantastic. That's fantastic. I am going to get away with that one and yeah. not have pills when I'm older. Yeah. I think yeah. that'll be interesting for lifelong cannabis users because we we really haven't delved into the whole preventative care. I and mean, we're not really good about preventative care here in the U.S. anyway. But researching, so, you know. Our new our new slogan should be, you're going to die first anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. There you go. <laughs> so You're sicker than us. Yeah. We've dwindled down to a mere four. It's, uh, it's uh, Steve and Denise it's about to be and Kevin and his wife down here um, <laughs> hanging out underneath the 1310 banner, which is staring at the sky and nobody else, um, which is an interesting scenario. That's and okay. The back of my head's, you know. <laughs> so. Well, you know, you don't have you can face you can face a little I that way. I could, but then I'd be talking to nobody. And the trees. The trees yeah. are looking at the sign. The sign is looking at the trees. I don't know. I already talked to the trees enough. So. <laughs> the trees. Please take away my I pain. I already spend enough time talking to myself. <laughs> so, uh, Gersh, you got to say anything before you go? You look like you're getting ready to leave. You got your topical Gersh is oil tired. With you. He's been rubbing everybody today. So, yeah, it's almost all gone. Got splashed around a lot of people here. It's look at that. Got a lot of pain. I, I, I was <laughs> asking Gersh earlier if he, if you know, because it's got some cannabinoids in there, but um, it's made with a lot of other stuff too. There are a lot of other herbs and yeah, herbal yeah, it's, remedies it's, that. It's, uh, work well with the cannabinoids. follows the pathway of like, you know, the herbal medicine that's been practiced for the last couple of thousand years. Uh, uh, the apothecary medical preparations, you know, your herbal medicine preparations will be a blend of herbs. Uh, they all help each other out. And that's the same basic idea. So uh, peppermint oil and yeah, peppermint, myrrh. Yeah, clary sage. Love, love to learn that. Myrrh as in frankincense and myrrh. myrrh. Love to learn that recipe someday. Myrrh. You'll have to teach me. Oh, we'll be right back with people. more live from the Kalamazoo <laughs> Area Compassion Club next. Something to say? Call now, toll free. 855 Triple M Radio. Michigan Organic Solutions in Flint. Patients and caregivers joining together to provide premium quality medical marijuana, edibles, clones, and other natural products and accessories to eligible patients. Now get newly certified for just $99. $99. Or renewed for just $69. That's right, doctor renewals for just $69. Now at Michigan Organic Solutions, Dort Highway, Flint. And don't miss their Ann Arbor Medical Marijuana Conference at the Clarion in Ann Arbor next weekend. Michigan Organic Solutions. MIOrganicSolutions.com.
The law offices of Targowski and Grow remind you to stand up for your rights. Always treat law enforcement with respect, but if you're detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to talk to my attorneys, John Targowski and Daniel Grow. Targowski and Grow have the education and experience you need to be successful in Michigan courts. Call Targowski and Grow toll-free, 800-957-1069. The law offices of Targowski and Grow, 800 957 Five seven ten sixty nine. If you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. When opening a marijuana-related business or club, it's vital that you obtain expert legal advice right away. 14-year legal veteran and respected field expert Denise Policella founded Cannabis Attorneys of Mid-Michigan to provide focused expertise to the developing industry. She's uniquely suited to help your business grow and remain open. And with attorney Timothy McDonald, now provides premier representation on criminal charges, raids, and asset forfeitures. Click on smallbusinesslegal.net or call 517-546-1181. That's 517-546-1181. Hey, Metro Detroit, come to Nature's Alternative, a clean, safe, secure cannabis provisioning center on the Gross Point Detroit border on Mack Avenue. Nature's Alternative has a professional, knowledgeable, and friendly staff helping patients and caregivers daily with a complete line of medibles, concentrates, topicals, and raw flowers. You'll get only the best medical-grade cannabis produced by Michigan growers and caregivers at Nature's Alternative. Open seven days a week. A proud supporter of the National Patient Rights Association. Details at naturesalternativeclinic.com or call 313-885-0000. That's 313-885-0000. 1310 WDTW, Detroit's progressive talk. The medical marijuana. So we're back out at the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club saying goodbye to Gersh, who's uh, cleaning up on the cheesecake. He <laughs> tipped me off that the cheesecake was still in existence inside and hadn't been completely cleaned out. Then when I went inside, they're like, I'm like, here, I'm here for the cheesecake. Before it disappears, they're like, oh, it's still, it's gone. And I'm like, oh, and they're like, ah, uh, we got you. So guess what I got? Cheesecake. It's up there. Oh, congratulations. It's by the broadcast. Cover it. Cover it. There are bees out here. Are there bees? Yes. Yeah, I love bees. the bees. And flies. Do you like flies, too? Cause no, I don't like the flies. The flies spit. The bees are not so mean. Yes. Well, you know, unless you bug them. Yes. That's a, that was an insect joke. So um, <laughs> it was a very poor insect joke. So um, we're, we're back out here doing the broadcast. You know, I, we were talking about politics. I'm going to do this again because I didn't do a very good job of it before. Here's Jane Felice Boudreaux. Our neighbors did not agree to pay Mike Bouchard $10,000 a month to be an absentee leader. Hello, my name is Jane Felice Boudreaux, and I'm running for sheriff because the taxpayers of Oakland County deserve better. He ran for U.S. Senate. He lost. He ran for governor, and he lost. How much time on our Oakland County dime are we going to allow this man to continue to look for another job? This November, you have a choice. Please vote for me, Jane Felice Boudreaux, for Oakland County Sheriff. Paid for by the committee to elect Jane Felice Boudreaux for Oakland County Sheriff. So we did this uh, commercial for Jane because uh, got a supporter because she is a medical marijuana friendly candidate. And I got asked on Facebook, uh, you know, actually it was by John Davis from Normal. He said, what makes her a medical marijuana friendly candidate? And so I answered that in this way. I said, look, first of all, she's got a personal connection. She has a sister with breast cancer that she's uh, trying to convince that she needs to get into the program. She's uh, wasting away in a hospital. Um, she's uh, very. She's lost a lot of weight. Um, she's actually got a feeding tube. This is this is exactly the kind of person that uh, needs some support and maybe some alternate, you know, therapy if that helps her. Um, so she's really trying to. So there's the personal connection. Secondly, um, she's uh, anti Mike Bouchard, and and the reason she's anti Mike Bouchard partly is because of the raids that he's conducted on this community. I mean, people like everywhere from people like Barb Agro. On down to, uh, you know, you know, people who are just trying to exist inside the program with what information they have. I don't consider those people as criminal in any way. I wouldn't say that ignorance is any excuse of the law, but any time I think you've got law that is um, obviously somebody's not trying to, it's, it's very apparent when somebody's violating the law or whether they're not, whether they're attempting to be criminal or whether they're attempting to abide by the rules. And the police have simply not tried to make that distinction, and they've been driven by people with ulterior motives, a.k.a. Bill Schuette and uh, 
uh, that whole band of people, the Tea Party people, really are anti-medical marijuana. But, uh, well, I'm getting a note from Gersh. Gersh says, correction well, coming. Please they shouldn't be. Correct me, Gersh. Um, I just well, recently saw, oh, man, I don't remember what the context was. It was a, 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 one of these uh, polls. Uh, I don't know what area. But um, the Tea Party was actually uh, in favor of, this may have been like in Washington or something like that. Okay. But the, but the, the Tea Party, <laughs> while being a, a little more conservative than norm, the majority actually did support um, a change in marijuana policy. Um, but those that consider, were considered strictly conservative were the most uh, um, against. The most but oppositional. Not, not uh, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised. It's not necessarily Tea Party. So... Um, okay, I'll you, stand corrected uh, then. You know, I, I won't blame. I won't hang it around. Are the, you saying the more more then. libertarian then, or I uh, think so. Yeah, because that's kind of there's a, that's an important distinction because yeah, the vast so majority that's, of that's libertarians I know support medical so, marijuana. So that's the one I understand wanna, as well. We, might yeah. not, we want, may want to try to welcome I mean, these people who, that are friendly within the Tea Party <clears> people. You know, but, uh, I'm just saying, don't alienate them. Are you, if there, if are, there's any possibility of them being friendly towards our our purpose and efforts and stuff like that. I know you're familiar with Judge Gray, uh, Judge Jim Gray, who's yeah. running on the Libertarian uh, Party uh, candidate ticket as vice president with uh, Governor Gary Johnson. Yeah, I'm going to be finding out where you are. I'm going to hunt you down so that I can be sitting there watching if I can at all get away with it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, we're going to be, um, we're going to be, uh, hey, Jim Gray's going to be in studio next weekend if you'd like to be. That's a what I was talking about. Come down and be a part <laughs> of the conversation. Please do. It's a tight little place, but it's you're a, welcome. It's, yeah, it's small quarters, but it's, uh, I think it's more adequate than our parking spot here. have sore feet? We're we're in the parking lot at the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club. But so. you bring up a really good point, Gersh. I think it's um, it's a it's interesting where I think people of generally differing points of view can meet. Um, libertarians, by far, um, and and to some extent, Tea Party uh, folks all want smaller government. And I think that part of their frustration stems from seeing corporations and big pharmacy and big banks taking over and making our decisions for us. When they see groups who are also um, who have not necessarily a goal, but whose the results of our efforts will be um, for people to be making their own decisions. So individual here's, civil yeah, civil my, liberties. My favorite, my favorite saying is is that it doesn't matter what color the boot is; it's still a boot in your face. Exactly. This is true. Absolutely, exactly. We and need so, less but, of that you know, boot. and and the more of us that can, can come to this common ground and and fight for individual civil civil liberties and also a smaller government and individual manufacturing and states' rights for responsibility. And and making you know like protecting the ind the industry in in Michigan that's developed over marijuana yeah. and not see big company come in and take it over. I think we can all meet at that common ground at least, and it's a good fight. It's a great fight. I think the you medical know? case is impeccable, morally speaking, because, uh, um, there, I mean, especially with this, uh, I love being able to say we can do something with medical marijuana without having to produce a high. And that removes the two things in people's It removes thinking. an enormous obstacle and an it's argument on most, yeah. It's not getting high. It's not just about a bunch of hippies wanting to smoke a, smoke a joint. And it's know? a fantastic way to start a conversation because most people who are ignorant or, uh, you know, either by design or, or by effort about medical marijuana most of the time say that. That's their first, that's, that's their right. first if stop. If you remove the high from the yeah. equation, it, it forces them to reevaluate this Yes, thing. it does. And uh, it's, it, yes? That's okay. It's a, uh, look, Bobby's back and he's got his tire fixed. We came all the way out here a couple hundred miles from uh, our home base and uh, had a tire issue. So uh, we're glad to see that um, there's a way to get the equipment home. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, being, and you. <laughs> being that we're in Kalamazoo, I didn't want to miss the fact of the idea that uh, MLive had a story about Kalamazoo in the paper recently, amongst uh, other publications. I'll give you a, a sample of it. The ordinance uh, they created um, is an ordinance. Uh, it looks like it says an ordinance. Would, see, it doesn't say that. Wow. It just says the ordinance would also lessen the fee or jail time offenders would serve. They're talking about an ordinance okay. proposed by what, the city attorney. <clears throat> Here we by go. By the city attorney. And what it would do is change the state from the, the, the higher limits or the higher sentence from the state. It would be 93 days in jail, up to 93 j days in jail. Instead of a year? Instead of a year, and or $100, a $100 fine. Instead of 2000 So but, it's changing the but, penalties. But, but you are still charged with the misdemeanor. So it's changing the penalties on the misdemeanor, so the it's max not penalties, really, correct? It's not really decrim, it's like... Um, uh, you know, all it's going reduce to do, crim. there you go. No. It's a reduction in the. All sentence. it's going to do is it's it's. <laughs> you get stopped by the police. You will receive a ticket, a citation, for med uh, marijuana possession right. use, whatever. It's a way to free up jail um, time. And then is what it is. he doesn't have to haul you down. He doesn't have to process you. You don't have to sit in jail. Right. 
you you this penalty is still right. going to be served. You're still going to end up going it, to jail, likely, like if a that's zip what line through the court system. Right. You're still going to be penalized. So he's trying to. I saw so, so, get a I misdemeanor guess, faster. My read, awesome. <laughs> my read on this yeah. would be then this: that the that the Kalamazoo city attorney, who's probably opposed to the overall idea, see, wants to grab a hold of the positive aspects with jail reduction, and and uh, maybe staff reduction and and service reduction with regards to maintaining that part of right. arresting somebody, bringing them out of the jail, incarcerating them, having them bail out, do all that administrative stuff. Um, well, and not only body holding and well, feeding them and taking care of them while they're in custody, all that stuff. Right. And then the court stuff that it, they've got to transport these these criminals. They've got to, yeah, my, well, my concern well, with that, though, defendants, is, is... they got to put them in chains and, you know, leg irons and whatever they do to them. And I will say, too, but it, um, after your first, um, if it was your first offense, first misdemeanor, there is an opportunity for that to be expunged as well. If you get charged again, no, then you have two, but you can get that first one taken off if, you know, you're a good person. That's the same thing as the 7411 that they have in Michigan state code for first offenders. Right. You don't need that to be expunged, but a misdemeanor you do. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, you're right. Two misdemeanors, you're out of luck. Yeah. Um, So. Unless you got one, I believe, before you were 21, I'd have to look at that, but yeah. Yeah. So my concern with that, though, is, you know, in, in theory... Instead of hauling off, you know, 10 people in a paddy wagon sitting around in the park smoking weed, um, they're going to write 10 tickets and then move on and be able to write 10 more down the road and move on and write 10 more down the road. I, I don't know if that's truly what will happen, but I am concerned about that. I'm wondering, you know, I'd be interested in seeing a copy of this, you know, mm-hmm. proposed. Because it seems like a good idea on its face, but it sounds like it's just a way to prosecute more people faster. I, that's... And, yeah. Honestly, I, and, I'm and certainly not a, lawyer, a lot of but certainly after well. after the King decision, the People versus King decision, saying you don't need a card, and as long as you're a certified appropriate patient, not violating Section Seven, that your marijuana related charges have to be dismissed. Okay. It's one of those things where you need to be arrested first for the Section Eight defense to start taking effect. Correct. I'm one. I'm a little leery about something that would try to move somebody through the system so much and so quickly that they yeah. may be jumping past some of those uh, defenses. The defense that someone may so not realize they have. I'd be interested in seeing that, but thank you for there's, bringing that to our attention. Co- uh, Great. Everything electronic. I'll have to look that up, yes. Or, actually, I will make my law clerk look that up. Okay. Here's something else that Robinson for. said in the M Live article. He says, if you're caught, and this is uh, points to the same ID, he's looking to save on the administrative side, but not really. Uh, sc- the only reason he's scrimping right. on the punishment side is because local people aren't allowed to make felonies. They're only allowed to make misdemeanors. Okay. Um, I mean, that's my opinion, but mm-hmm. um, I would that's where I would point that. He says if you're caught with the drugs and you want to come to court and you want to pay your fine and be done with it, that means any marijuana that's confiscated can be immediately destroyed. We don't have to maintain and right. keep it in a safe house and protect see, the people I just, from yeah, I just hear civil rights yeah, not see, happening. Yeah. That's, I'm not sure I'm going to like this So I, 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 I appreciate you yeah. bringing us to it, the attention to the fact that uh, the Kalamazoo City Ordinance, although um, if, if it, you know, it looks like one thing, but it could be completely looked at. Yeah, you, d- you definitely need to, to, to read through it. And, um, you know, we spoke with John Turgowski, um, and he was explaining some of it to us. Right. And Will there be public hearings on this, or is it on the... There's a first reading is Monday night. Monday Got it. Night. First okay. reading is Monday night, you yeah. said? If you're off mic, we can't hear you on the... Yeah. On the Monday broadcast. night. First reading, so, Monday night. Got al- it. Also, um, there was another uh, thing that happened in the news that I, uh, I think you're probably familiar with, Denise, um, unless you didn't know. Did you see this thing? Uh, it's uh, P versus Blizma Supreme Court. Bilsma, Trans- Bilsma. Bilsma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's an order. It's Bilsma a- is going up. Should yeah. medical marijuana patients, caregivers, be able to grow weed in cooperative gardens? This is a husband and wife who were jointly uh, ended up jointly being. That's all right. We're you know, we had the we had the music uh, turned up so we could hear the Jane Felice Boudreau commercial. I see. We've got to go back to another commercial break. I'm going to turn it down for us here. And uh, we'll be right back with more. It's the last part of the Medical Marijuana Radio Show live from the Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club with Kevin Spittler and friends. Uh, Denise, are you going to stick around for the last six-minute segment? Six minutes. I'll try. We'll be right back. If you are a Carded Michigan medical marijuana patient with a need for safe access but have reservations about privacy and discretion, there is an answer. It's the Ant Farm. The Ant Farm is Metro Detroit's trusted professional mobile transfer service. Write this toll-free number down. 
888-369-3320. Lab tested, mold and pesticide free. It's the Ant Farm's convenience you'll try, but quality standards, privacy, and friendly professionals that will bring you back. The Ant Farm comes to you. Call for discreet details right away. 888-369-3320. Law offices of Targowski and Grow remind you to stand up for your rights. Always treat law enforcement with respect, but if you're detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to talk to my attorneys, John Targowski and Daniel Grow. Targowski and Grow have the education and experience you need to be successful in Michigan courts. Call Targowski and Grow toll-free, 800-957-1069. The law offices of Targowski and Grow, 800-957-1069. If you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. Introducing the Bolt, an incredible tool patients and caregivers find invaluable. It's widely known that concentrates are an effective yet expensive quick fix for pain and nausea, but oils and earwax are messy and easy to waste. The Bolt is made of titanium, just a dab, easy to use. No mess, no expensive waste. Get the Bolt of the new Thunderbolt, made in the USA right here in Michigan. Details on how to equip your club or dispensary at the-bolt.com or call 586-540-7582. The Bolt, 586 586- 540-7582. When opening a marijuana-related business or club, it's vital that you obtain expert legal advice right away. 14-year legal veteran and respected field expert Denise Policella founded Cannabis Attorneys of Mid-Michigan to provide focused expertise to the developing industry. She's uniquely suited to help your business grow and remain open. And with attorney Timothy McDonald, now provides premier representation on criminal charges, raids, and asset forfeitures. Click on smallbusinesslegal.net or call 517-546-1181. That's 517-546-1181. Hey, Metro Detroit, come to Nature's Alternative, a clean, safe, secure cannabis provisioning center on the Gross Point Detroit border on Mack Avenue. Nature's Alternative has a professional, knowledgeable, and friendly staff helping patients and caregivers daily with a complete line of medibles, concentrates, topicals, and raw flowers. You'll get only the best medical-grade cannabis produced by Michigan growers and caregivers at Nature's Alternative. Open seven days a week. A proud supporter of the National Patient Rights Association. Details at naturesalternativeclinic.com or call 313-885-0000. That's 313 313- Okay, so we're not on the 1310, at least right now, at least for this live broadcast, but um, boy, i got to push the mute button. It's not, there we go. Um, the uh, only one that hasn't medicated. I have no memory left. <laughs> <laughs> you have no memory left, really? Apparently. I told, I said I don't remember what we were talking about, and Gersh was like, Bill's mom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Supreme Court case. Got it. Well, you know, uh, this whole political cycle is really important, and um, I, I think it's really important to support people who are medical marijuana friendly. So i got to uh, give a shout-out to Eric Gunnels if you're in the uh, – uh, area of the Genesee uh, Township, or was it? No, I'm sorry, Th- Thetford Township Thetford. in Genesee County. Um, he's running for township trustee. trustee. He's a medical yep. marijuana friendly candidate. Just had his picture taken with David Layton. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Mm-hmm. Saw it on the Facebook. Did you see the, the Eric Gunnell's picture? I I have to confess to not having gone on Facebook for like he's, three months now. I think so. he thanked him for endorsing him or something. I think <laughs> no. David Layton endorsed uh, Jared Gunnell. Good, I good. I think it's a great thing. Um, Eric, if you're listening, you owe me a phone call. <laughs> Erica does the uh, Flint Talk Radio program, mm-hmm. uh, the Genesee County Compassion Club mm-hmm. show. Yes, he does. And uh, right. that's on from 3 until 4 o'clock on Wednesday afternoons. I also want to give a shout-out to Smokey Kush at the 420 Radio Show. He's on Thursday evenings. I believe. Is it Thursdays? I think it's Thursdays. I don't know. Click on it. I've got it on the website. Click on it on the website. You'll find out where. Uh, or, or just Google 420 Radio Show, um, and you'll see Smokey Kush. Um, he's got a great program. It's on the stick am. And then um, who else? Are, who else are we missing? I know there's other. Uh, uh, we got um, Rick's program. Rick's other program, the Planet Green Trees show. From Gersh Avery is sometimes on it. Yep. Uh, Gersh, can you tell us about Planet Green Trees and uh, who's on the program? You're more familiar with them than well, we right are. Off the bat, since Mike since you're a part of the. Michael is on is uh, is a, is a uh, leader of the whole thing. Michael Kamorn, I stepped over. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well. I, you, I was talking when you said Michael Kamorn. I wanted to make sure who was you know. Yeah. Um, you know Mike Kamorn. Birmingham Compassion um, 
Chad uh, is uh, there uh, every time. Uh, Rick Chad's from the Birmingham Area Compassion Club? Compassion Club, yeah. Uh, uh, Rick Thompson, he's there almost uh, every night. Every show? Jimmy, um, or Jamie Lowell. Uh, Jamie. I'm still trying Bristol to Compassion. figure out how this entire room full of guys gets a word in. Uh, Jamie and you and Rick. <laughs> I think and I Mike think, Kamor and all have microphones. I just jump in and start talking over people. From okay, time to time and then <laughs> I'm going to have to listen to this. You've never heard the Planet Green I have, show? I have my kids, oh. and I turn into a mom on Thursday. Oh, night. I see I what just, you mean. Poof, just well, like you know, that. you can you can listen to work. I could. You can listen at work. There's you can just pop on the player. And, I should. And listen I, to I, it. I should listen to the podcast. They have a look, Jamie has a lot of great guests on that show. Uh, admittedly, yeah, he brings in a lot. We're doing, he's Good. trying to get Rick Simpson to be coming in uh, recently, which is gonna. Which, you, you had know, Rick Simpson on before via Skype, right? Yeah. Um, one of these days, someday, you know, I, I really hope that, um, well, not too far away, it'd really be nice to be able to get Rick Simpson into the United States to be able to talk. That's a, that's a rough and, gig, uh, right? Pardon? That's a rough gig to do. Well, um, he has, you know, issues. Uh, he got caught with 1,600 plants up in Canada uh, one time. He was cooking them down, giving away, giving the results away free of charge to anybody that needed it. Uh, but they didn't. Canadian they didn't shine. Police came in and testified at his trial. And said this does not fit the profile of a drug dealer. Most of them don't give do all that trouble just so that they can give it away free of charge. Right. But they punished him anyways, you know, and that certainly. Was the Canadian police that were coming in there saying that in this court case. Wow. They found him guilty, charged him two thousand dollars for giving away the cure of cancer for any free of charge to anybody that needed it. They called him guilty. That's the most insulting thing, and then charged him two thousand dollars for. This is the man that. But he's got a felony conviction now in Canada, and to be able to come into the United States, I don't know how easy that is to do. I think it's it's, it's harder to get a visa to come into the U.S. Yeah, if you're yeah. a convicted felon in another country. It's a lot harder to get a visa, just a visitation visa. It just you've got to you've got to clear certain hurdles. They want to do a background check, and they want fingerprints and all this. I don't know. There's a lot of crap to go through. I know that. It's quite Sounds hard. Sounds like it's who you know rather than what you know. Then. Possibly. Uh, Car- I, yeah. I I used to work for Carl Levin doing that, so, you know. Is it doable? It's doable. It takes a lot of effort. It takes effort. And it might take some money, too. too I don't know. Is there any money involved? Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. No? Oh, wow. Well, um, there's no filing fees? Nothing to... uh, No. Wow. Well, maybe we press, maybe we should, at the cons, you know, maybe a, 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 a normal application feel like everyone visas, else. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing everybody else would have to go through. Well, we should we should pressure the people that have that power to let them in. It's, I mean, really. When, uh, who's he going to hurt? Speaking from experience, U.S. senators making, absolutely have that power. So. Making, um, making a pathway for it, you know, clearing the way for him if he chooses to do so. I, we, you know, it'd be so nice to be able to get him in. He may have actually been able to get back into Canada a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I know he went on that extended vacation over in Europe for a while. He right. went, to the, went to the Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam and uh, got no, got a phone call that his house had been raided while he was gone. Wow. Well, yeah, see the tactics that they uh, that go on here? He just stayed you know, away. every every time I walk away from my grow, I'm always wondering who's who's going to try and t- attack it while I'm not, yeah. you know, in its immediate attendance. It is. I mean, you know. Particularly when we're such an infant movement still. When people are looking to get into it and they see the figures who are more public getting punished. I've had my home broken into twice over people trying to find marijuana. It's, it's, I've had it's, my yeah. whole grow. It's not uh, there, guys. Guess again. Uh, you know, I don't know. People, do, people don't, uh, People well, yeah, and I, that's a routine call for attorneys, I can tell you right now, is that we get calls, and I'm sure Mike will tell you he'll get calls, where we have people calling us saying, my house was broken into and my weed was taken, you know, or my, my grow was taken, or they took four plants, or they took all my meds, but I'm afraid to call the police and tell them. Look, and, yeah. I called them. Yeah. Look, I called them immediately. When, yeah. when, I, I, did have a, I did have a concentrate. But it's a concern. Stolen. I mean, some of these people have kids. And they're going through divorces. They're afraid the kids are going. It's it's ridiculous that you're afraid to call the police for help when Look, you're when you're. Exactly. You just you just reminded me of something that's going to be a very awkward moment. Um, I had the concentrates pipe stolen, and the person uh, that stole it uh, has been now convicted because I had to hunt him down myself and forced the police to prosecute him. Uh, by filing a written complaint, because otherwise they just weren't interested in pursuing it. So uh, this is a person who committed a home invasion. I mean, this is a felonious condition that's got a two-year uh, prison sentence attached to it. If it's, if they, you know, that's the maximum. But for the first first offender. Um, but uh, so long story short, um, he's pled guilty and he's now um, behind bars, and you know he's being a addressed from a correction standpoint he's a young a young gentleman but i got to go back to the police and collect the evidence they got my pipe with its medicine in there i can't wait for the cop the sheriff guy to go uh here, here you go mr green here's your uh, here just take it well i'll close my eyes and hold my nose okay that's gone that's what i that's gonna be an awkward moment can't wait it's coming up very soon i'll go with you
<laughs> Look, we're out of time. The Kalamazoo Area Compassion Club's going to kick us up out of here. Uh, we'll see you next weekend when we got Judge Jim Gray on uh, from California, mm-hmm. and he's out uh, on the political bandwagon. Lucky having a, uh, in the studio. It sounds like Gersh uh, might want to come along and uh, uh, tag along for that uh, trip. Uh, Charmy might want to come along, too. She loves the law enforcement against prohibition, which Judge Gray is a, a member of. Yeah, we uh, we definitely plan on having you guys back here in Kalamazoo at, at election time. and. Or doing remote all over the state, hopefully we were talking about, right? We're working on it. We're yeah. working on it. Thanks to people like you, Kevin. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time on the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. The Medical Marijuana Radio Show and RadioWeedShow.com are trademarks. Copyright 2011. The comments, ideas, and opinions expressed in the preceding program are those of the show participants only. Nothing stated in this program reflects the ideas, opinions, or beliefs of this radio station and or Clear Channel Radio. This is Detroit's Progressive Talk, 1310 WDTW, Dearborn, Detroit. Listen on iHeartRadio.